here. Coach David Patrick is here, uh, fresh from the practice court. Man, Coach, you Man. your call ain't boring. I'll tell you, <laughs> y'all, y'all hey, are not boring. We like to keep it close, man. I know man, that. I tell you, I tell you, that game on Saturday was crazy. For those who didn't get a chance to see Sac State and Eastern Washington, Coach just decided, you know what, we're going to play from behind by 25. Actually, I don't think Coach decided that. The players just decided they were going to go down by 25 for like the entire game. 12 minutes left, they start making a run, and then all of a sudden with seconds left, the game is tied. Uh, it ends in heartbreak. I, w- Coach, I, I mean, obviously there's there's multiple different stories to that game. You, you you get to the locker room. What's what's the first thing you say to your guys after a game like that? Look, I, obviously you're, you're proud of how they fought, you know, and the resiliency we showed because um, I've been in those scenarios at a lot of levels. You guys watch the NBA a lot. Something, t- sometimes just fold it, fold it up and lose by 30 or 40 and move on to the next one. And it's easy for us, for this group, to be content on a road, road trip to win one game at Idaho and then just fold in the tent the second game. But the fight the way they did um, just showed me that they're, they're good enough to compete and be in the top echelon of this league. Yeah, that was frustrating at the beginning of the game because Eastern Washington, I mean, it felt like they were throwing shots behind their head and they were going in on that. They were hitting everything from beyond the arc. But to your point, these guys stayed the course. They stayed tough. They stayed mentally locked in. And knew eventually, hey, if we can put a couple stops together, we can start making shots ourselves. And that's exactly what happened. Was there was there a point? You can talk to us, coach. You can talk to us. Was there a point where you were like, oh, it's just not gonna happen today? When it was like at 21, 22, like it's not gonna happen? Or did you always think, you know, we haven't let it get completely out of control? If we get like a three stops in a row, we could be right back in this thing. I remember going into the 12 minute media, just like, just cut this thing to 15, man. And anything could happen. I think we were down to eight, 19 or something at that point. Mm-hmm. I said, like, well, just cut it, to, cut it, cut it. And you never know what'll happen. And they, to their defense, to their credit, they did. You know, we made an exact, made a, a couple big threes uh, for us, but we decided to guard. And that's been my, my whole motto. Like Eastern Washington's a shooting team. Everybody knows in this league, Eastern Washington and uh, Northern Colorado can shoot who we're playing. But we can shoot. I looked at the score sheet at the end of the game. We hit more threes in Eastern. We hit 14 threes. They hit 13 threes. But we guarded, to your point, all the way to the last 40 seconds of the game and gave up two threes late, you know? Yeah. When when you're playing a team like that, like Eastern, like 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 the Eastern Washington game, is there a, like they're shooting like 150% from the field. <laughs> it's like, hey, keep keep fighting. At some point, they're not going to do this for the entire game. Like, at some point, these shots aren't going to fall, and we got to take advantage of that. But d- definitely, you know, de- especially if we guard and we start making shots. That was the, that was the flip side. They were making shots. We were missing layups. We were missing free throws. Um, so it makes it so much harder on your defense, you know, when you're not scoring uh, and they're shooting the, the, the eyes out of the ball. Um, so, look, if, if moving forward, I think our guys know, like we can't spot good teams that many points. We spotted teams points the last six games and been able to win. Like obviously, at some point, that's gonna bite you in the butt, and it did. Uh, it did the other night up at Eastern Washington. Right. Hey, what a play call by you uh, to get Zach open for that game tying three. I mean, I just want to talk about him a little bit and 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 what he did at the end of that game and what he's done um, for most of this season. I mean, when, when the when the team has needed a bucket or they needed a jolt of energy. He seemed like he's been there every single time, and it was on full display again on Saturday. No, he's been great, you know, and I and I trust him because of the work he puts in the gym, um, and he trusts me. You know, I think there's times where I run plays for other guys, and maybe some people think you should run more for Zach, but I think the misdirection of the Austin Pattersons and the Hunter Marks of the world uh, sets Zach up, and he's he's patient to how he where he gets his shots. Um, I did get on him though in front of the team the other day. Uh, yesterday because he's averaging 16 and a half points in the second half and two in the first half. So I'm like, can we get you, <laughs> get you playing? Oh, can we play in the first man? Like, like, like yeah. So, uh, but, but, but credit to him and credit to his work ethic and uh, you know, and him trusting in, 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 in us, you know, cause at, at the end of the day, he's the one guy that I needed on my side uh, when I took the job and he's, and he, and he's been there uh, from day one. Zach Chappelle out there doing his De'Aaron Fox impression. I'm like, I'm going I'm, 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 I'm to turn it on late. Uh, I'm going to turn it on late. Six of the next eight games you guys play, Coach, are uh, at home, including 
Northern Colorado on Thursday, Northern Arizona on Saturday. We've talked a lot about this uh, this week, Coach, with you know it, it, as it pertains to Mike Brown and like the Sacramento Kings and. You know, you talk about Zach Chappelle talk, asking him, hey, you, you're doing all this in the second half. Why don't we sprinkle a little bit of that here, here in the first half? But when you've got, like, you know, role players, how how much do you let them play through mistakes? Yeah, you know what? I don't have the luxury Mike has, and I, I know that. I don't have <laughs> those guys sitting on my bench, TD and, <laughs> and Della Vadova and, and those guys sitting over there. But – um I, you know, I, I have during the year, and I think that's helped us. You know, we're playing Quadri Adams more, uh, who's been a joke for us off the bench. Mm-hmm. We're playing Hunter Marks more. Um, so I've let them play through mistakes. I just know as a player, and we all played at different levels, that if you got to keep looking over your shoulder and being a, being, a, being a robot, it takes away from your game. And for us, it takes away from our depth. And so I try to give our role players a little bit more rope um, during the early part of the year so that they can help us hopefully now uh, this part of the year, which they have been, especially with these long road trips we have. And that's got to help with like your confidence. That's got to help with their confidence level, right? The fact that they know they can make a mistake and know I'm not going to get a DMP for the next four games. Mm-hmm. No, it definitely does. You know, and I, and I inherit a lot of guys in the portal. And I think a lot of reason that's why they left because they had a short hook or they weren't played. Uh, so I don't want to duplicate that here, especially if they're, they're working and about the right stuff on the floor. So, um, you know, I, I'm cognizant of it because I played, uh, but it's one thing to say it and one thing to, to, to do it. And I try to give them as much rope. And they get two mistakes, not three and four, but two. And then, then, I, then we'll move on to the next guy. Yeah, I, there's, a, there's a little quirk I would always do when I coach. And I'm coaching kids, so it's different. But I never would want to sub a guy out after an offensive mistake, right? Like even if I'm in my head, I'm like, oh, no, he's got to – that's a bad shot. He got to come out. I'll let him come down on defense – and then go back on offense, and I'll get him out then. Because I never wanted in his head to like not have confidence in making a play on the offensive end, and you know, like you said, looking over his shoulder and things of that nature. And guys, you know, whether it's high school or college, they still think about those things. You know, they still get skittish if they get pulled out. You know, immediately after a bad shot or something like that. Oh heck, you know, heck yeah, they do. You know, and, and and then they make another mistake if they're trying not to make a mistake. So mm-hmm. you know, they they know for me though if they ain't playing no, with no effort on defense or, or rebound. Like Callum, I sat his I sat his big big behind on uh, on Saturday at uh, at Eastern Washington the whole second half, and we came yeah. back. So if you don't want to play, I don't care that you had twenty seven and seventeen. He ain't playing yeah. this game. So yeah. if I do it to him, I, I'll do it to anybody. Yeah. For those that don't know, when he says big behind, that's seven one. <laughs> that's, that's that's phenomenal. Are you are you enjoying the season, Coach? Are you you know the the, the highs and lows? Are you are you are you enjoying your 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 first year at Sac State? A hundred percent. First of all, the people in in the city and the people I'm around every day, my administration. But uh, on the journey, and when I took the job, I knew this. Like you want to be around people, and I know that you want to be people you're around people you're okay losing with. Does that make sense? Like, like who can you be with through the bad times, not the good times? And I have a the group of guys I got and my staff are phenomenal people and they're about the right stuff. So the so the journey's been fun through the highs and lows because you're doing it with, with, with good people and, a, and an administration uh, that supports us, you know, and um, that's been fun. And, and, and the biggest bright spot here in Sacramento that everybody here has been and I'm just saying it, it's not lip service that everybody I've been around has been, been been real cool, a little different than SoCal, man. <laughs> SoCal, different place. We're not going to use SoCal people, man. A little different. <laughs> it's a different place, man. Hey, coach, you got uh, Northern Colorado on Thursday, Northern Arizona on Saturday, both at the Nest. Combined one and seven in league, uh, 10 and 23 overall, mm-hmm. combined with those two. My, my question to you, coach, is how do you get these guys prepared to play the game and play the opponent? And not worry about the record. Well, they, they should hopefully uh, they got the message on Northern Colorado. Like their their wins on non league are phenomenal. They beat Colorado State at Colorado State. They're up five at Colorado, um, and the guys they lost to are like Baylor, Houston. Um, mm-hmm. So they lost to, to to formidable opponents, you know. And uh, they should have beat Montana Montana the other night. They lost in the buzzer to them. Mm-hmm. So they know they were in the final last year in our league. They got the two leading scores in the league. Um, and so they, they know the challenge, at least the returners know the challenge at base. I don't think they beat them last year, uh, but it's hard. You got to, you got to flip the switch 
quickly because we're two and one, uh, but we ain't that nice, you know. So, so I try to remind them. I try to remind them, you know, religiously about about every opponent's different and every challenge is different, and they're zero and four. So, how hungry are they going to be to come in here and try to knock us off at home? And so, we we got to keep that edge, and I try to do that. Uh, but when you're dealing with these seventeen to twenty three year olds, man, you never know. You never know. I had, they're coach, I had a coach tell me she has a couple of games like that coming up on her schedule. Mm -hmm. It's like those are more nerve wracking than the big games. Yeah, you lose the big games. It's like, all right, you know, you got some things to correct. You, I'm more nervous about these games coming up here. No, no, no doubt, you know. And I, I guess for us, I don't know the last time Sac State just thinks they're coming in to beat Northern Colorado and NAU at home. You know, like so. So that means we've set the bar high. But with mm -hmm. that comes it comes some expectations, and we gotta gotta try to live up to them against two really good teams and two really good coaches. Yeah. Uh, we got to get out to the nest, man, and support yeah, sure. uh, oh, Coach Patrick and, 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 the, and the Sac State basketball team. As we said, uh, six of the next eight games are at home, so you got plenty of opportunity uh, to get out there. Uh, good luck on Thursday, Coach. Good luck this weekend, and you know we appreciate you as always. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate y'all.